Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs today with a package from the United States uh, from an eBay auction that I was waiting for around 10 years to get what's inside and I already cut it open um, just to do that not on camera but I didn't peek inside and if you take a look you already can guess what will be inside and uh, you even can read um, the amount I paid for this. So we have here some data sheet for, for the Nemo tube and even some ori of the original drawings. Wow! Even some schematics. And that must have been from the from the time when they were produced in the late 60s and early 70s. They these tubes, these display tubes, only had a very short production time because they were, were superseded simply by LED seven segment displays. And here we have uh, the special transformer that you need because these are vacuum tubes, so you need voltage for the heater, the high voltage for the anodes and of course um, control voltages for the grids and even an original data sheet. Unbelievable. Yeah, even this didn't survive the time very well. So, and now let's see what else we got? We got some of the original tube sockets. And here should come the tubes. They were produced by IEEE, which is still in existence today. And IEEE have developed over the decades lots of extremely sophisticated display types. Some of them you could see on my channel on the uh, vintage display tube videos. So this is one of the tube boxes. And here they are. An original unused, never used as they look like, IEEE Nimo tube. One of the rarest tubes that you can get hold of today. As I told you, I've waited 10 years to get a batch of, I only wanted to have six, but the seller had 10 of them. And I think I got them relatively cheaply compared to other eBay auctions because he advertised them as, not as Nimo tubes, but as uh, readout tubes. As you can see, that, that's what their original technical name was, IEEE readout tube. And so not all of the tube aficionados were in the auction, probably. And uh, here you can see the what we call in Germany the Getter mirror. Um, this is a little bit of, these are metals just to absorb any remaining uh, gases in the tubes. And uh, if you can still see them shiny and reflective, that's why it's called a mirror, Getter mirror, then you can be 100% sure that the tube is still sealed, that there is still the vacuum inside. Because I once had a, an oscilloscope tube that didn't work anymore and there, um, th these are metals like beryllium, etc. Et if they come in contact with air, uh, the carbon dioxide in the air quickly turns them into a beryllium oxide and beryllium carbonate, which is white. And uh, if you have the shiny metal surface here on the getter mirror, you can be pretty sure it's still, the vacuum seal is still tight. And these are in fact little oscilloscope. You can nearly guess how, 
how the projection effect worked. Here you have the uh, cathode where the electrons are emitted, then they are accelerated linearly in this direction. And just as in an oscilloscope, then you have what you cannot see, the shadow masks for the, for the numbers, 1, 2, 9, and then they are projected on this little screen here, on the phosphor. So, I think that was really a score uh, I made. I've, I've even calculated inflation corrected prices and this would not have been an investment if you had kept them for 50 years. Ah, by the way, here on the side you can see also a little contact and that's where the anode acceleration voltage uh, where you put the, uh, the contact on. Still have to find out how to get a connector for this. Alright, and there's still more inside except for the tubes. Just be quite careful with the tubes because they are really as rare as hen's teeth, as you say in the US. And then we have got some, a, what's it called, a bezel, um, which was also advertised or listed in the eBay auction. Uh, sadly, only for five of the tubes. Of course, I want to make a clock with hours, minutes and seconds, so I have to do, I have to make a bezel uh, of my own. And... Ah, more. Oh, this was also a part of the 5 tube display, probably. Yeah. Ah, at least I can repurpose the tube sockets here because I need six and we had, I don't know, three loose ones plus these five which I can screw out and this was thought to be here to be used something like that. I don't know if why they used a five digit uh, display. You could also order um, ah, this must be here the connector for the anode. That's that's probably how they, ah, they, there they connected, no. Ah, here you have to solder a wire on the side, but I don't know if this is just by spring, spring contact uh, action. Hmm, I have to investigate this. And I think we still have the transformer. And by the way, Fran Blanche, at her YouTube channel, she was uh, nearly the first to demonstrate the workings of Nemo tubes uh, with a little counter, a one-tube counter. And her video is very popular and you should subscribe to her channel because Fran really has a great YouTube channel for electronics. So this is the power supply. Uh, with filament voltage output 1.1 volts, 60 cycles per second. Yep. And what we do we have? So as you know, we in Germany here have 230 volts AC input. So, but I have a step down transformer. And where are all the contacts? This looks like the high voltage contact. Hmm. Strange. Remove them. Hmm. I have to unscrew this to see how to get where are the contacts for the voltages. Hmm. Strange. So we there should be two contacts for the filament and the anode contact. So let's see what 
we have here. Yeah, I don't want to to break this on camera. I will I'll unscrew this, but this is quite handy because I already started to build in the meantime um, a little clock circuit. Uh, let's wait for the camera to focus. And I decided not to, let's enlarge this a little bit. I decided not to use a microcontroller, but as I did decades ago with CMOS ICs, because uh, you can control the anodes with voltages that are CMOS compatible. They need only a few microamps of control current, and the typical configuration is plus 7 volt to turn an anode on and minus 5 volt to turn them off. That together gives 12 volt. And I simply built a little adjustable positive and negative regulated power supply linear. And uh, you don't not need very much uh, to build a clock. That is how I usually draw my circuits for one-time projects. Uh, like you need, there's the uh, 4017 counter and decoder, which has 10 decoded outputs. That's exactly what you need for the NIMO tubes. And you put six of them in sequence and make still some digital logic gates. Like you need a few Schmidt trigger NANs here for creating a pulse delay and for giving the reset signals at the right counting. And uh, this one over here, this just generates a clean one second pulse out of the 50 hertz uh, mains frequency from the secondary transformer winding. Uh, so all in all, you only need these six counter ICs and two or three of the logic ICs. And that's what you, what we have here, six counter ICs and two or three of the Schmidt trigger input quad NAND gates. And you already can see this is a little step down converter for the, uh, to make 1.1 volt heater voltage out of the 12 volts uh, from the transformer. And I've already checked all the outputs. Everything is working. The only thing that is missing is the high voltage anode display. And then it should be working. Uh, this will take probably still a few weeks to get it ready. So, and finally, um, IEEE also have advertised four decade and even six decade display tubes based on the same principle. So you have four and six decades in one tube, of course, multiplexed then. And let's see, they, they somewhere have also have a, a circuit configuration, which they call the time sharing at the time, not multiplexing. And you could, could buy all kinds of additional equipment like integrated circuit driver and decoders. Here is the four decade one and even you, the pricing here, you see a single decade Nemo tube in 1970 cost you 20 US dollars and that was a lot of money at that time. And I think from 1970 to today we have an inflation factor of around six, I think. Uh, so this would be $120 per tube in $2020. Uh, and I got them for, I don't know, around 70 bucks per tube. A look to the future, lower cost displays. Yeah, with a, with multiplexing. So that was it for today. And uh, thanks for watching for today. Until next time, bye from Roger, bye from Kanka Labs.